Warning. In this video we boil highly flammable liquids. Fire safety protocols must be in place. Greetings fellow nerds. I need some toluene for my lab and in the past I was able to buy it directly as paint thinner. But now I can't find a pure source and all I could get was this lacquer thinner that claims to contain toluene mixed with methanol and methyl ketone. Since I have no other choice I'm going to try and fracture to still off the toluene. Now before we begin we have to figure out if it's even worth doing. If the toluene composition is very low then it might be more worthwhile to search for other sources. The quickest way to find out is to search for the material safety data sheet from the manufacturer. These sheets usually state a range of compositions for chemical products. Now manufacturers tend to keep their propriety formulations a secret and won't state the exact composition, but the range is usually helpful. Looking at this company and typing in the product number we find something interesting. The MSDS also says the product has acetone. But the label says it just contains toluene, methanol, and methyl ketone. The product number and even the pictures on the website match, so why the difference? Perhaps I got an old container from the store or the manufacturer didn't label it correctly. Mistakes can happen. Alternatively, maybe the manufacturer has different formulations for different countries based on the local cost of materials and I got a different formula for a different MSDS. Nonetheless, the toluene is pretty good, almost half. But for greater confidence, we can do some crude testing. Here I'm mixing 50 milliliters of a lacquer thinner with 50 milliliters of water. Methanol, methyl ketone, and acetone if it is present are all very soluble in water, but toluene is almost insoluble. Therefore by mixing the lacquer thinner with water I should see a floating layer of non-polar solvent consisting mostly of toluene and some of the other components partitioned into it. Looks like we have something, about 32 milliliters worth out of 50 milliliters. Now while the volume is misleading because some of the methanol and ketones are also dissolved in it, this still seems worthwhile to try and distill. So here is our fractional distillation setup. If you want to know how the whole thing is assembled and used you can refer to my previous video on the topic. I've included links in the video description. Okay, let's try on the stirring, the heating, and the cooling water. Now when doing a distillation it helps to thoroughly research your components and the azeotropes and list them out in a table in order of temperature. We can see that the acetone and acetone methanol azeotrope boil at around 56 to 55 degrees Celsius while the next cluster of compounds boils around 64 degrees Celsius. So if we're condensing near 55 degrees then we know we have acetone as azeotropes. But if we go past that into the 64 degree range before we condense then we know we have no acetone. And it looks like that is the case, we're entering the 60 degree range and still nothing is condensed. And it seems we're condensing at around 62 degrees. The difference between experiment and theory is likely due to my thermometer being a cheap eBay acquisition and the fact that it's thermocouple based which inherently tends to have a couple of degrees of air without stringent calibration. A lesser contribution to the air is the fact that the barometric pressure in my lab is unknown. Looks like we're getting a nice fraction of methanol azeotropes. Unfortunately since the boiling points are so close together, I'll be unable to tell when one fraction is finished and the other begins due to the poor resolution of my thermometer. Another issue is that my fractionation column might not be good enough to resolve a 0.6 degree difference in compounds. Professional distillation setups have very precise and accurate thermometers and extremely efficient columns that can resolve the difference. Anyway I'm not too worried. I'm only interested in getting pure toluene and not the methanol azeotropes. While I can still separate the components further just using my amateur equipment by using digital techniques, it's not worth my time. I won't discard it though. The azeotropes are still 88% methanol and thus still useful as an impure source of methanol if the other components are not reactive toward my chemistry. Okay, looks like we're rising again and going past the methanol azeotropes. At this point we might be condensing methyl ketone. I'm going to change out the receiver and collect this new fraction. For those wondering, I'm so hellbent on getting toluene because it's one of the base chemicals for making pure methamine. Yeah, looks like we're moving past the boiling point of methyl ketone, which should be around 79 degrees Celsius. Perhaps I'm heating too much and overloading the column with vapor. I'm going to turn down the heat just a bit to slow down the distillation. Well that sucks, now it's going too slow and not reaching the top of the column at all. And yet I only dialed back the heat a small amount. This can happen with distillations where the column loses too much heat and completely condenses out before the vapors can exit the top. But sometimes the properties of the component are such that it's very easy to overload the column and not get good, good separation. Now if I played with the heating I might find that spot in between no condensation and overloading where I get good separation. But because the best heating spot keeps moving as the composition of the source flask keeps changing, I'm not going to bother. Instead I'm going to turn up the heat and just boil out this low boiling component even if I lose a bit of toluene. 
I can always readjust my column and improve performance later. I just want the toluene and there should still be a lot left over. And there we go, I'm definitely overloading the column now and getting very crappy separation. But at least I'm pushing out to all of that methyl ethyl ketone along with some toluene. If we were getting good separation then the temperature at the top of the column would tend to stick to one temperature as that pure component or azeotope is stalled off. But if we're getting bad separation then the temperature will continuously vary as it is here. Okay, looks like we've finally reached the boiling point of toluene and have boiled out all the lower boiling components. The temperature seems stable so this toluene should be pure. Let me change out the receiver, and now we're collecting pure toluene. Now you might be wondering, if mixing with water allowed me to separate most of the toluene directly, then shouldn't I have done that first and skimmed off the impure toluene layer so I could distill far less liquid and thus make my overall job much easier and faster? You're absolutely right, and that is a very viable approach. I personally didn't do that because I wanted to recover the methanol isotropes and methyl ketone for other experiments. The solution of water mixed with methanol and methyl ketone is less useful to me. Disposing of it as a hassle and distilling it would have defeated the purpose of saving time. Although looking back at how badly the methyl ethyl ketone and toluene have overlapped, I'm starting to think water mixing might have been viable. Oh well, at least I have pure toluene now. And we are done. The source flask just has some impurities, so we're going to turn off the heat and let it all cool. And here's our collection of fractions. Fraction 1 is what I believe is the azeotropes of methanol. Fraction 2 is the mixture of methyl ketone and toluene that came from the overloaded column. And fraction 3 is our pure toluene. There is about 250 milliliters of toluene in there which is about what I need. So I can stop here. But of course you guys don't pay me to cut corners. So let's see if there are any simple ways we can get some better separation of fraction 2. Now there are a few ways we can approach this. One, we can mix it with water and try and extract it out. And to be honest, this is probably the best way. Two, we can buy an even longer column to get more separation power and thus possibly separate the components. But as you can see, I don't think I can fit a longer column in my existing setup. And the third way is to improve my existing setup by insulating the column. And here we are with just fraction two being distilled and the column has been wrapped in aluminum foil. Since lowering the heating resulted in the vapors condensing out before they could reach the top of the column, by insulating the column they'll retain heat better. The drawback of this approach is that the column is easier to overload so you have to go even slower. But since we want to go slow anyway to get better separation this shouldn't be a problem. And there we go. Odd, our condensation temperature seems to be sticking at around 82 celsius. While we are getting good separation since it's not continuously rising, 82 does not correspond to methyl ethyl ketone. Perhaps there are other ingredients in the lacquer thinner or other azeotropes I'm not aware of. Maybe I'm still overloading the column, but only very slightly. Oh well, I'll keep going. Maybe I can still get some good toluene separation. So once again the heating is insufficient to vaporize this particular composition of components to reach the top of the column. Either that or we're conditioning toluene now. I'm going to change out the receiver and slightly increase the heat. And there we go, as you can see distillation can be quite a time consuming headache. Especially if the particular mixtures you're working with exceed the capabilities of your equipment. I was able to easily distill hydrobromic acid and the methanol azeotropes, but this methyl ethyl ketone and toluene mixture is giving me trouble. Something about that mixture requires more separation power than my column has. Looks like we've reached the temperature for toluene. Let me change the receiver again. A very powerful professional column is something called a spinning sideband distillation column, which uses an actively spinning central element to slam down the condensation into the source flask. Only the volatile vapor can pass. The spinning element makes it extremely difficult to flood or overload so it can use a vacuum insulated column without problems. Such a column is very expensive so I'll probably never get one. But who knows, maybe I'll build one if I can assemble the right parts. And we are done. Despite not getting good separation of the methyl ketone, the insulated columns still let us improve separation of toluene from fraction 2. And here are our fractions. 2A is the stuff that came off at 82 degrees celsius, whatever that is. Fraction 2B is the overlap of 2A and toluene, which is very little. And 2C is our extra toluene. The insulated column really did help. And here is all of our fractions. As I said before, fraction 1 is the azeotrope of methanol and will go on to be used as an impure methanol source when it's acceptable. I'm not sure what to do with fraction 2A and 2B. There is not enough to try further fractionation, so I'll probably just save it. And fractions 2C and 3 is toluene, which will go on to making pure methamine. 
And that is how you use fractional distillation to separate the useful components of lacquer thinner. Thanks for watching! If you would like to support the continued production of science videos like this one, please support the channel on Patreon. Links are in the video description. In this video we'll be performing the very useful laboratory technique of fractional distillation.